This is the only scenario where this happens, and I find it maddening that they expect us to buy that. So, so three and years. Most people do because they just want their games. Yeah, three they, years they from just now, just want their games. Three years from now, where will this be? Do you think? Right where we are now, it'll be they'll they'll, they'll have come up with some very restrictive legislation that allows very little. And, and we'll be very in a very similar position where we're having the same discussions and arguments, which is maddening because, you know, four or five years ago, we were arguing over cost of attendance. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. When, when five, six years ago, if you had given a player uh, on campus a stipend, that would have been an egregious violation of NCAA rules well, and amateurism what? principles. Yeah. They changed their rules and everything's fine. They said doomsday was around the corner because nope. people couldn't afford it. It's going to hurt women's sports. We're going to cancel sports. Where are we going to find the money? And everybody's done it. And it's fine. It's easy. It's no big deal. Yeah, and the other thing about this, none of this is actually coming from the schools. Okay, the idea of this this whole thing, and that's why the Fair Pay to Play Act is the worst name for that bill in California ever. It's not paying them to play. It's allowing a person on an athletic scholarship to do the same thing that someone on a music scholarship <laughs> can do. Or someone on an academic scholarship to make a little money. Hey, I can make money tutoring you. I can make money and still be on scholarship. That's all this is. And all of this, Trey... And, Mike, all of these are great discussions to have on each campus. Yes. So each campus should sit and say, what are we about? What do we want to do? What do we want to allow? Just as they do with, I'm sure at Duke, they sat down and said, how much do we feel is appropriate to pay our coaches? Yeah. Like, are we willing to cross into the, the – are we, are we willing to pay our basketball coach $8, 9000000 million a year? Like, that's a great discussion to have on your campus. It is not an appropriate discussion for industry-wide policy to say, all right, <laughs> You, you know, you this one class of person, you get only this, and that's enough. That's all you get. We don't say that to any other person. Literally, we don't say that to Never. any other person. And that's that to me is the rub here, and the thing that we've got to we really have to wrap our heads around because it is it's wrong to run a. We're not running this like Division Three. No, and and we are selling these players for bi literally billions of dollars and paying the coaches millions and building these gigantic facilities. It's professional in every way. And the NCAA has acknowledged, Miles Brand acknowledged that in the early 2000s. Yep. That's when they came up with collegiate model. Right. Collegiate model means. That's just a phrase. It, they made it up yes. to say we're professional, but the players are not. And, and to have everybody go, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. That's a good idea. I I, 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 I have one more question, but you also, in one of your other sound bites, I want you to explain to everybody where the term student athlete came from. Student athlete came uh, 30, 40 longer uh, years ago. Uh, Walter Byers, who you remember, he was the sure, president yeah. when you and I were in school mm -hmm. so he, and, and ruled with an iron fist. I mean, it was back when, when the NCAA was basically run by one man. And, and he coined the phrase and, and had everybody use it, student athlete. And it was because the NCAA was fighting workers' compensation claims when players were getting injured. And, and that's where it was headed, that they were going to have to pay workers' comp. Right. So by using this term student-athlete and you know, saying they're students, uh, not employees not and all this other stuff, uh, they were able to, to work their way out of it. And it has, it has come, like now everybody uses it, even, even people like me who don't believe the term. Like I used to say when I was in college, I was on the NCAA Long-Range Planning Committee. Clearly, we didn't do a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> but... I used to say there's no such thing as a student athlete. Like I'm, I'm a student when I'm in class, yes. and I'm an athlete when I'm playing. So Correct. when at the NCAA tournament, when they have a post game press conference, they say uh, questions for the student athletes. Like, come on, man, they're players. Just say players. It right? is, it is ridiculous. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm a simple man. I think as we all know. No. And, and I'm listening to all this, and I'm like, wait a minute. To me, a guy like Mark Walker has leverage on the NCAA. Mm -hmm. So why couldn't? And I'm just using him, not the California. I'm just, I'll just use him with the the federal rule. Why can't he, they or he just say to the NCA, you have until this date to come up with a plan. And if it isn't the plan that I like, I'm going ahead with my rule. Because you're saying three years is going to be here. Why would a guy, a Mark Walker or a state, wait that long and give the NCA that much time? Well, because it's going to take a, it's going to take a significant amount of time to get a bill through Congress, through the House of Representatives, through the Senate, and then get it passed into law. I get that, but why not tell the NCA you have one year, one year from now, or we're going to continue with this? Well, bill? I well they are continuing with it, so I think they're pushing it forward. Okay, I mean there, there's there's significant movement and a lot of, a lot of I was I was on Capitol Hill about ten days ago. Um, to be available to answer questions. I felt like if I get invited to Capitol Hill, I should go. Right. And so I'm not stumping for legislation. I'm not for or against any of it. That's not my area. 
but uh, you know, I, I feel like I've got some knowledge here and mm-hmm. I can answer questions. And, and if, if you don't like the answer, that's your problem. We're exactly. But, right. but was up there doing all that. And I was surprised how many representatives and senators are behind this notion. There are a few that are not, right. but there are more that are. And so that's been the biggest surprise is so many lawmakers around the country find this really unfair and they're willing to do this and that their constituent like they don't think it's going to hurt them with their constituents mm-hmm. uh, last thing here is we're up against the clock let's also dispel the other thing that people are freaking out about this well if we do this the best schools will have a competitive imbalance if you don't think that's happening already you're not you don't understand what you're watching yeah the boosters at alabama paid off nick saban's mortgage on his house just because they wanted to. Look at the locker room for the LSU football players. Every single one of those locker rooms, uh, those lockers, is a first-class suite pod that they have because they wanted to. The Clemson facility has a nap room and a putt-putt facility because they wanted to put the money in there. That competitive balance is already there. That is a red herring among all red herrings. Yes, they want to make it seem like like the little guy won't be able to compete like they've they've been worried about the little guy all this (laughs) time. And clearly the little guy can compete. Yeah. But um, but you're right. It, that that is a phony argument, and it's it's just shows kind of the market inefficiencies that all these facilities are being built for for two reasons. One is recruiting, and the other is to enhance performance. Correct. That's all it is. Yep. We had these arguments over. Remember, we, we used to argue over food. Yeah. Until we argued over how much here. how much you could feed a player. Yeah. Bagel and no cream, no cream cheese. Right. So so their argument used to be, well, well no, listen, everybody needs to be malnourished, or otherwise <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> And you said, hey, the world, the, the, this is going to be the do- same thing. Doomsday is around the corner. Sports are going to be canceled. We're not going we're not going to be able to afford women's some women's sports and do all this other stuff. Oh, do, should we really feed the players steak and lobster every meal? If you want to, go ahead. Who cares? Yeah. And they changed it and everything's fine. And nobody's sitting at home going, I'm not watching these overfed athletes play. Yeah. This isn't what college sports is about. They're supposed to be hungry. Just a dry bagel, <laughs> dead burn it. That's cares. my line in the sand. They want yeah, their oh games. What's up? Thank you so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. Don't forget to download the ESPN app. And if you want more premium content, which you do, make sure that you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. See you soon.